Whew. All right, tonight's the night. We got the first two episodes of Ahsoka tonight. Very excited about this, but at the same time, I'm kind of anxious. Because if you've been following Star Wars for a while now, you'll know that the fans aren't really on the smoothest ground whenever it comes to Disney Lucasfilm. And that's for good reason. When you look at the trajectory of the last several shows, they have either underperformed or the reviews have not been very great whenever it comes to the audience side of things. After Mandalorian Season 2, we got Book of Boba Fett, which I thought was okay. It had great moments, but there was a lot in it that I was like, huh? What are we doing here? Same goes for The Mandalorian Season 3. I thought it was okay. I liked it more than most people, but there was a specific episode. You all know what I'm talking about. Everyone, special guests! Where I was just like, what are we doing here? And then there were several moments in that season what are we doing here? There were a lot of moments in that season that kind of just felt like, oh, we got to tack on some things that were canceled from Rangers of the New Republic. We got to put them in here. We're just going to get this sandwich and we're just going to shove it together. We don't know what's in it. We're just going to eat it, though. And then we got Obi-Wan, which is probably the most controversial Star Wars show that we've gotten so far, I guess I could say. Looking back on it, I really enjoyed watching the show for the first time. Going week to week, it was very, very special. Of course it's going to be. It's Obi-Wan. I mean, we're bringing back Ewan McGregor, Hayden Christensen as Anakin slash Darth Vader. What's not to like about that? And it brought us those cool moments that we were looking for. But again, there was so much in that show that was just like, what are we doing here? This is an Obi-Wan show. Why are we focusing on Reva? We don't need to focus on Reva. We're treading in territories that probably shouldn't be treaded in, such as, you know, right before A New Hope. I mean, Luke's not supposed to see a lightsaber until A New Hope, yet he didn't see it in Obi-Wan somehow. He just had his back turned to it. Oh, and then we're going to have these bounty hunters chase little six-year-old Leia or nine-year-old Leia, whatever her age was in that show. We're going to have these bounty hunters, killers, chase her through the woods. They can't catch her, though. I mean, they have to corner her to a tree. I mean, it's a chase that lasts, like... <laughs> two minutes long it's it's insane to me some of the decisions in that show don't even get me started about the trench coat but then we had shows like andor which i really really liked andor andor is probably my favorite star wars show that has come out so far but yet again it's one of those shows that divided the fan base not a lot of people watched it at all and the part of the fan base that did watch it half of them liked it and the other half didn't like it because of how slow and different it was compared to the other star wars shows that we have been getting so the last year and a half really hasn't been that great for Star Wars. But on the other hand, we have all of the Dave Filoni content that has kind of hit us over the last four years-ish. We had Clone Wars Season 7, which I thought was fantastic. There was an arc in there, the, the Martinez twins arc, or the Martinez sister arc. I thought we could have done without, but that last arc that we got with that show phenomenal the best way that they could have possibly ended that show the bad batch has some fillerish episodes but retrospectively looking at it the bad batch is fire whenever the bad batch hits and then of course tales of the jedi tales of the jedi season one is probably the best star wars thing that has come out of disney lucasfilm i don't want to categorize it as andor i said andor is my favorite star wars show i don't really count tales of the jedi as a star wars show it's kind of just like a series of shorts if you will but it's probably the best thing that's come out of star wars in the last couple of years so dave filoni has built himself quite the track record over the last several years so going into ahsoka like i said i'm a little bit nervous but mostly excited because it's pretty much all Dave Filoni. He wrote all of the episodes. He directed two of them to my knowledge. The trailers have all looked fantastic. This is basically a Rebels season five. Rebels is probably my favorite out of the two whenever it comes to Clone Wars and Rebels. Rebels has a better story, but Clone Wars is better executed. Plus, Rebels is a little more for kids, especially the first two seasons. Once you get into like the end of season two going forward, it completely changes tone and it just gets so good from there. But I get the arguments that a lot of people have whenever it comes to Rebels being for kids and whatnot, and the animation style is different from Clone Wars. I completely get all those arguments, but I feel like I enjoy the story of Rebels a lot more than I do most of the arcs in Clone Wars. When it comes to this first episode, I really don't know what to expect. I'm expecting greatness, but at the same time, I'm feeling a little reserved because of the damage that Star Wars has done to the fan base over the last several years. I think, the head of the head of the snake needs to be cut off. I think you all know what I'm alluding to. The leadership is just not there at Lucasfilm right now. They're basically in shambles. After Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on the movie front of things, Lucasfilm is is pooed right now. As is Disney overall, but at the same time, 
Lucasfilm had not put a movie out in four years. This was their first movie in four years. And then it completely flopped. I didn't think it was great at all. But then we're bringing all of this back around to Dave Filoni because Dave Filoni, I think, is the closest thing that we have gotten to George Lucas and will ever get to George Lucas. He's basically the apprentice to George Lucas being the master. And everything that we've seen from him over the last 10 years, including Clone Wars, Rebels, Bad Batch, Tales of the Jedi, everything that he has written and put out has been nothing short of fantastic. Sure, there's a few bumps in the road, but there were bumps in the road whenever George Lucas was in charge. Of course, people have their reservations about loving the prequels because it's so different from the original trilogy. I personally love the prequels, as you guys can see. Shout out Star Wars Theory. Not that he needs it, but the lore that he has built up over the last several years with Rebels, Clone Wars, all of these characters that we're going to see in this show has me so excited. So I'm, I'm like I said, very cautiously optimistic, but yet excited to check this out. Before we get started, though, I just want to say if you are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, like button, turning on post notifications. Whatever you guys want to do to support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. And if you're interested in seeing the full-length version of this reaction or any other reaction that I have upon the channel, as well as early access to said reactions, you'll find them right here on YouTube on my membership page. So if you guys could check those out as well, I would greatly appreciate it. So without further ado, I'm super excited. So let's go. somewhat of a crawl kind of like solo except solo didn't actually crawl okay i'm glad that this is kind of picking up right where we left ahsoka in mandalorian season two a ship has entered this sector they're early it isn't home one ask them to identify themselves and transmit their clearance code yes sir uh, Balin and Shin, they're gonna break her out. They're Jedi. Say again? The signal is an old Jedi clearance code. Oh, they're no Jedi. Maybe once, but... I'm calling their bluff. Signal them to come aboard. Smart man, but you're gonna die. <laughs> the Mon Calamari with the Rebel helmet is great. It's very Old Republic. It's... Quite a surprise meeting Jedi out here. Hmm. Our existence remains a mystery to most, Captain Hale. You're no Jedi. Just some overconfident Imperial trash who just pushed their luck too far. You're making a mistake. Oh, yeah. He, he is. <laughs> no, the Mon Calamari with the Rebel Helmet! You're right about one thing, Captain. We are no Jedi. Very cool. But also sad, because we lost the Mon Calamari. <laughs> Gosh, the lightsabers aren't bouncing. They're actually cutting them. Ah, cool. Balin, you are true to your word. And well paid for it, Lady Morgan. Okay, so she already knows them, or at least him. The Jedi who captured me seeks the map. Who is this Jedi? Ahsoka Tano. Oh my god, that opening was fantastic. Ooh, are we in store for greatness? Cool, same kind of text as Book of Boba Fett and Mandalorian. Is this place some kind of temple the delayed drop is great those aren't supposed to be the wills is it i don't think it is new rock stars <laughs> What does the whispering say? Can't make it out. She's got the Ahsoka, like, smug look down to a T. Is this said map that they said that she was after? The music is great. It's very original trilogy-esque. 
Huh. Give it to us. Us. Are those Elspeth's droids? Kind of looked like the ones from Mandalorian. Or with her. Yeah, I think they are. <laughs> Dismemberment in the head. Initiate self destruct protocol. <laughs> Whoa, that is a big explosion for three droids. Yeah, what? Three droids did that? Good thing I arrived when I did. Is he practical? He looks very practical. I am just following standard Jedi mission protocol. For Yang, the order doesn't exist anymore. Yes. Thank you for telling us. Right where Morgan said it would be. How did you get her to tell the truth? I was gonna say, so she, she told her. Fulcrum, this is home one. Do you copy? Over. Come in. Fulcrum, nice. There's been an incident. Dude, this is giving me heavy, heavy original trilogy vibes. With the shots, with the music, I'm loving it. Hera. General Sandula. It's good to see you. And you. All right, where's Chopper? These days, there are few who can wield the Force. Perhaps one of them was once a Jedi. Does she have Kanan's lightsaber? It looks a lot like the hill. This one holds the secret Morgan's after. Which is? The location of the last missing Imperial Grand Admiral. Thrawn died at the Battle of Lothal. His death was never confirmed. No, it was not. I'm kind of nervous that this is going to be lost on a lot of normies. I feel like this show, it's required that you see Rebels before. That's the vibe I'm getting so far. I've luckily seen Rebels, so it's not affecting my viewing, but I can't help but think about that. The device is locked, and the key to activating it has eluded me. I love that they're using, like, a practical puppet for Hu Yang for a lot of these shots. A lot of these still shots, should I say? You know who can help you with this. I'm not sure she'll want to help. She'll do it. Sabine? For Ezra. Yeah, dude, Normie's gotta be so lost. Like, who's Ezra? Who are they talking about? The Empire was defeated. Thanks to the heroic efforts of Commander Ezra Bridger. Is that Ryder? Because that's Clancy Brown. This monument we dedicate here today stands in recognition who fought so valiantly on our behalf. May their courage and commitment never be forgotten. It has to be. Commander Sabine Wren. I love that they're using the mural as like a monument now. Yeah. Thank you, Governor Azadi, for that introduction. It is. Oh my God, that's so good. Music fits very well with her character. I like that they're celebrating like the anniversary of the Empire's fall on Lothal, because for the longest time the Empire was there and they were celebrating Empire Day. So it's a very cool parallel. Governor Zadi's looking for you. Well, here's a new order. Get lost. You can't do that. She's got her attitude. Is she gonna stop? <laughs> She's crazy. She is indeed. Cool. The tower. Bro, it looks just like Rebels. That, oh, that's crazy. And the, dude, just the use of practical effects makes me so happy. Like the puppets and everything. Even though it's CG sometimes, just the puppets look so good. Her helmet, which will most likely soon be added to my ever-growing collection. I need, I need help. I literally have three helmets on the way right now. I'm, oh no, I need her money. Is that the one he left the message on? Hey, Sabine. I made this recording because more than the others, I need you to understand. 
We've been through a lot. Grew up together in this rebellion. And we're not really family, but you're like a sister to me. Again, this is really awesome, but normies are going to be lost. That definitely looks like Kanan's lightsaber, though. I'm trying to think of how she would have gotten it. I can't remember the last time we saw it. Because I don't think he had it whenever he sacrificed himself, right? What was this place? An ancient temple built by my ancestors. This was a night sister's temple. You're a witch. A survivor. I hope we get to see some of that night sister magic put to good use in live action. There's not much left back oh, there. Oh, so cool. His name's Merrick, right? Galen Merrick? Star killer? I doubt it, but dude, I'd lose it. I would lose my mind. Send this one to the planet Lethal. Master? Do as she says. Yeah, she's got the Padawan braid, so they had to have been Jedi. Ahsoka Tano's former apprentice is on Lethal. You're looking for Sabine Wren. I still don't know how I feel about Sabine possibly being force sensitive like i can do with a little bit of force sensitivity but full-on jedi eh. I'm, I'm so happy that they included him it slipped my mind you were missed sabine everyone was there no they weren't no they were not you were the only one and you didn't even go what are you talking about everybody's there i think i know how to find ezra Yeah, dude, the music is 10 out of 10. Kevin Kinder knows how to do Star Wars music. Witches. Great. This is getting more exciting by the minute. I need this in my house. So, where do you call home these days? This ship serves me fine. I was gonna say, right here. Got a table in the ground. No. Pops up whenever, whenever you want it to. It'd be my home. You never made things easy for me, Master. Lady Tano, I have an update. Not right now, Hu Yang. Go ahead. This isn't just about finding Ezra. It's about preventing another war. The map stays here. As you requested, I have run an analysis on the lightsaber. They are quite elegant, with several classic design motifs. Eh, I don't think it's Kanan's. It looks a little bit like Kanan's, though. The construction and overall design are executed exactly the way I taught younglings to build a lightsaber. Yeah. But this one... In the last 500 years, I've only known one student who built a saber such as this. He disappeared at the end of the Clone Wars. Like so many Jedi. More and more every day keep popping up! They will be formidable adversaries. For you alone. Of course, you may not be alone for much longer. Sabine, you're going to want in here. Yeah, she gone. Left the cup on the floor. Uh, the shin here. Oh, it's just like the shot of uh, Maul and Tatooine tracking them down. So far, this is the most star wars that a live action star wars show has felt the mandalorian definitely but this feels very star wars just wish she had changed a little she's still just as stubborn and bullish as ever she's mandalorian you knew what you were getting into yeah when was she ever not stubborn mentoring someone is a challenge i bet your master found you difficult at times he most certainly did. Well, you're of no help. <laughs> what do you mean? She's helping. What is that? I want that. <laughs> this looks cool. So that's the known galaxy coming from the orb, and then that's the place where Ezra and Thrawn are. Thrawn are? Whoa! Do not touch the cat. I swear, the Loth cat does not get touched. She will John Wick you. Who you need back up now! We 
we have a problem. It's just we little itty bitty one. I love the orange tinted saber. It looks cool, but it also has its symbolic meaning of, you know, kind of dark, kind of not. I thought she just did a flip. I was like, what? Like a Jedi flip. What? We know she doesn't die. I mean, she got stabbed in the side. God, dude. I wish he was here to, to you know, feel the fan reception. It's, it's so sad. Oh, rest in peace, Ray. But also, rest in peace, Sabine? I'm a little confused here. Because we see her in the trailer, so she's not dead. Okay, hold on. Um... Is this going to be another Reva situation? Oh, man. Okay, I I'm going to save myself to talk about that at the end. But this episode was fantastic. Everything from the opening, seeing Balin and Shin just wreak havoc on that, on that New Republic ship was so good. Just the action and even Dave's directing has really improved since the beginning of his, his live action debut in The Mandalorian Season 1. Though that episode wasn't great. The story wasn't really needed. I thought the direction of that episode was pretty good. And then his direction in season two was also fantastic. And then in this, he he's really starting to prove himself. And I'm getting more and more excited to see his take on an actual Star Wars movie. As we have, have seen kind of his vision in these shows so far. But he did a really good job with this first episode. I thought it was written fantastically. That opening was fantastic. It took its time. It definitely took its time which I actually really liked. One thing about this show so far that I'm noticing is that it feels very, very focused, unlike anything that we had we have really seen from the Mandoverse so far, like Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian season one, season three, I guess. Um, not so much seasons one and two. They kind of have their own side missions, but I don't think this show is going to have any filler. I feel like Dave has a very clear vision that he wants to stick to. He just wants to hit the ground running he wants to go he wants to set things up as quickly as he possibly can without boring the audience though this did take its time and it was slow a little bit i didn't really feel it at all i know that was one complaint that a lot of people had is that it felt really slow i didn't really feel it i thought it went by pretty quick for a 50 minute episode but i, I could see that complaint another thing i want to touch on is how normies or fans of just the movies and live action shows are going to react to this because from what we've seen so far it really feels like you had to have seen rebels if not clone wars as well to understand what is going on and i'm kind of nervous because i feel like not only do the do the fans voices matter and the reception from the the diehard fans matter but reception from the normies also really matters as well. So I'm kind of nervous that they're not going to understand what's going on. I like that they had the crawl in the beginning to kind of catch up viewers on what's going on. But people aren't going to know who Ezra is or any of these other characters because they didn't really touch on any of those characters in that crawl. It kind of just set us up for what we were going to see or what we were kind of building up into this moment. So I'm a little bit concerned on that behalf. But I thought the introduction of Ahsoka in this episode was great. Looking for the map to go and find Ezra and, and Thrawn so that they can ultimately stop him. The sets look a lot less volumey, which I like, especially the outdoor stuff. Granted, most of the outdoor stuff that we saw, besides Lothal, was kind of in a smoky, foggy environment. So they can hide it, hide it kind of well, but it worked. It, it didn't feel like that they were on the volume whenever they were on that one planet with the um, with the Night Sisters temple. But even on Lothal, I didn't really feel myself taken out of it being like, oh yeah, that's the volume. And speaking of Lothal, seeing Ryder again, dude, like how could we not have seen him? And you only get Clancy Brown to play him. 
because it's Clancy Brown. So I thought that was really, really cool. But as to the dark side or like the dark side users in this episode, we get introduced to Balin and Shin. Balin's really, really cool so far. I feel like we didn't really get that much with Shin. I mean, I feel like we got a good bit of both. Maybe even more with Shin. But at the same time, Balin kind of has this backstory to him that they're teasing. Especially with Hu Yang. Hu Yang talking about his lightsaber hilt. And he was like the only one that he, he recognized that lightsaber hilt from. So there's a little bit of a mysterious element to that character, which I'm really liking so far. And then also we got our first look at Merrick who I, I think looks really, really cool. As to the actual identity of that person, I feel like it could... Mm. One theory that I really, really like is that it's Barriss Offee because obviously they had their tension in the Clone Wars and their relationship was very, very complicated throughout that show. And that was one of the best parts of that show. One of the best like character arc moments. So... It possibly being her would be really, really cool. But I'd be curious as to how she became an Inquisitor. But another fan theory going around is that it's Starkiller or Galen Merrick. Out of the question. It's not going to happen. Even though it would be awesome. It would kind of detract from everything else that's going on. Because if Starkiller just showed up, everyone would lose it. Lose their minds. And there's just no way that he couldn't overshadow everybody or wouldn't overshadow everybody because he just would i mean it's star killer also explaining star killer is kind of iffy with the current canon that we have but i would easily excuse it if we got star killer but at the same time like i said it would kind of detract everything and take away from everything that these characters have, have been set up for so far like if we get six episodes in we're into these characters and they just reveal that this guy is star killer i mean it would kind of just throw everything off balance a little bit and like how do you defeat star killer like you gotta get luke and even luke is wouldn't really <laughs> luke would have a really hard time with star killer especially peak star killer and we kind of see that this is this time period is is luke in his heyday so i feel like that could that could clash a little bit but i, I gotta stop, stop talking about star killer i'm gonna get my hopes up but Seeing all the Rebels characters, I thought Sabine was fantastic in this. Obviously, Ahsoka's fantastic. She wasn't in this episode all that much. For it being her show, this really is a Rebels Season 5. It really is. But seeing Hera again, I thought was great. Obviously, we got Ryder again. But we get to the ending where Shin is after the map that Sabine has. They obviously go toe-to-toe -to -toe a little bit. And then she gets stabbed. Oh, man, uh, I really don't know how to feel about this because this is this was so controversial coming out of Obi-Wan. You would think that they would learn from their mistakes. Maybe they'll explain it at the beginning of the next episode, like, oh, it missed all her vital organs. Um, it, it did seem to be like on the far right side of her. But enough is enough with characters getting stabbed in the gut and living. It's, 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 what about Qui-Gon? Like, come on, dude. Um... I really don't know how to feel about that. I don't want to get too hung up on that, but I, that's really the only negative I have with this first episode. I think everything else was fantastic. I think the setup, fantastic. Obviously, Sabina's not dead. There's just no way. We've seen her in the trailers. She's not dead. But like I said, that's really the only negative that I have. Everything else was fantastic. I'm very into this show so far. So let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. If you guys are new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, like button, turning on post notifications. Whatever you guys want to do to support the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. If you're interested in seeing full length versions of this reaction or any other reaction that I have upon the channel, as well as early access to said reactions, you'll find them right here on YouTube on my membership page. So if you guys could check those out as well, I would greatly appreciate it. And episode two will be right out after this reaction is put up. So hopefully you guys did enjoy and I will see you all in the next one.